Good afternoon, class. We are looking at uh, module one, covering chapters five and six, chapter five, trigonometry functions, chapter six, periodic functions. I'm going to answer the following question, convert 315 degrees to radian, so on and so forth. So reminding everybody the fastest way would be to write D over 180 degrees equals R over pi, because pi radians equals 180 degrees, and replace one of them. For example, D is 315, and find R, or just simply multiply by pi over 180, simplify, you get 7 pi over 4. Uh, convert 9 pi over 5 radians to degrees, you multiply by the reciprocal of that, 180 over pi, and the I cancels out, you do the rest, and you have a 324 degrees. Uh, convert three radians, uh, two degrees, you multiply it by 180 over pi, 540 over pi, this is a precise answer, and you go with uh, the decimal representation. Normally we go with two decimals. Find the exact value of 14 pi over three. You recall, that uh, all trigonometric functions are periodic functions. The period for sine is 2 pi, for cosine is 2 pi, for tangent and cotangent is pi. So because this is sine, you take out uh, multiples of 2 pi, and 2 pi, uh, in this case, 12 pi over 3 is 4 pi, you get uh, sine of 2 pi over 3. And uh, sine of 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Needless to say, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. All right, we're going to answer the following. Name the quadrant that contains terminal point of the arc t equals to. To answer that, we remind everybody of the uh, unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Sine is y, cosine is x, and tangent is y over x, and the rest of them are the reciprocals. Okay. So, uh, Tangent is y over x or sine over cosine. Cotangent is x over y or cosine over sine. Cosecant is 1 over y or 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over x or 1 over cosine. So uh, pi is about 3.14. Uh, 2 pi is 6.28. And pi over 2 is about 1.57, roughly. So this is 0. This is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2, precisely. And so therefore, in the first quadrant, uh, t is somewhere, the arc is somewhere between 0 and pi over 2, that means 0 and 1.57, roughly. In the second quadrant is between these two numbers, pi over 2 and pi, or 1.57 and 3.14. In the third quadrant, uh, between pi, or 3.14, and 3 pi over 2, or 4.7, one roughly, and the last one, the fourth quadrant between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, which gives you 4.71 uh, and 6.28. Uh, That's what seems to be the case. And so we want t to be 2, and obviously 2 is uh, between these two numbers. So ma it makes it quadrant 2. Find the exact value of cosecant 11 pi over 2. Uh, the reference arc is pi over 2, and cosecant, just like 
sine uh, multiples of 2 pi can take out, be taken out. 8 pi over 2 is 4 pi. You can take out and you end up with uh, 3 pi over 2. So it's cosecant of 3 pi over 2 or 1 over sine of 3 pi over 2. We should know sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the reciprocal of negative 1 is itself. Determine the length of arc of a circle and area of a sector by the central angle theta. If theta is one half radian and r is 10 meters, the central angle is theta equals 60 degrees, r equals five feet. So reminding everybody, this S is the arc length and this would be the area of a sector. S equals R theta, A equals half of R squared theta. So S equals R theta and must be in radians. It is in radians. 10 times one half gives us five. And the units, units of the radius, five meters. The area of a sector, half of R squared theta. So half of 10 squared times one half. This is 100 divided by four gives us 25 meter squared. Sixty degrees is pi over three because it has to be in radians. S is R theta, R is five feet times pi over three is five pi over three feet precisely. And a rough estimate with the SMR. If they don't ask you for that, you have to go with the exact answer, always exact answer, unless they ask you for a decimal representation. Area is one half R squared times theta, and R is a five, so R squared makes it 25. So that means 25 pi over six precisely, roughly 13.090 square feet. Each wheel of a car with a radius of 15 inches makes three revolutions per second. How fast is the car moving in miles per hour? We're talking about linear velocity. So reminding everybody that uh, this is S, this is the angle or arc theta, linear velocity covers the distance and angular velocity covers uh, the angle or arc, therefore. Linear velocity by definition, distance over time is S over T. Angular velocity would be angle over time, theta over T, or two pi times RPM, uh, revolutions per minute, or RPS, revolutions per second, and so forth. And since V is S over T, and uh, we can replace the S with R theta and separate them in this manner, we find a relationship between the two types of uh, velocity, the linear velocity and angular velocity, V equals R omega. So what is given here, obviously R is 15, omega is 3 R revolutions per second, RPS, and we want to find the velocity. Omega is RPS times 2 pi. You should always multiply it by 2 pi. Okay, so again, this was RPM, revolution per minute. This is revolution per second. And revolution per uh, second is a three, three times a two pi, six pi radians uh, per second. If V, therefore, is R omega, multiply the two, and it gives you 90 pi precisely. You keep the exact answer until the end that you have to, you may have to do, do rounding. Inches per second. We are done, however, they want it in miles per hour. So 
So a couple of relationships we need to know. So we are going to do the conversion. We know one mile is 5,280 feet. We know one foot is 12 inches. We know one hour is 60 times 60, 3,600 seconds or 60 minutes. A minute is 60 seconds, things of that nature. So what we have is inches per second. What we want is miles per hour. So notice we are going to say, okay, one foot is 12 inches. What goes at top? You can put 12 inches at top or one foot at top. It, it has to be done properly. Since the inches at top here, you want it at the bottom. Okay. Um, miles, you want it up here. Okay. Feet is down here. They cancel each other. And the one hour is at the bottom. That corresponds to 60 times 60. 3600 seconds, everything cancels out. We multiply the numbers and we get 16.065 miles per hour. This is a unit conversion. Should have no problem there. Remember, all of these are called unity, okay? But which one do you put at top? Which one do you put at the bottom? Whatever you need, you do it accordingly. Uh, if the length of an arc S is 50 inches in a circle with a radius of six inches, find the angle theta this arc subtends, find the area of the sector formed by the central angle theta. And again, reminding you of the formulas, the very first thing is what is given, okay? So we know that arc S is 50. So S is equal to 50 inches or the radius is six inches. That is what's given. And what are we looking for to find theta? And we know S equals R theta. Therefore, theta is S over R. So 50 divided by six will give us 25 thirds. And that's in radians. Uh, what is the area of a sector? A half of R squared theta. And so one half, we have the R, six squared, and theta, we found it to be 25 thirds. This is 36, this is six. These two cancel each other, six times 25, 150 inch squared, units of the radius squared, because you want units of area. Find the linear velocity of a cylinder with a two feet radius that is spinning at 40 RPM, revolutions per minute. And again, the formulas. So what is given, always write the given. R is two feet. Omega is 40 RPM with Multiplication by two pi becomes radians, and the velocity is missing. So the very first thing, this has to be changed. Uh, revolutions per minute or per second or any unit of time has to be changed by mo all you have to, whatever it is, just multiply it by two pi. And now this becomes two pi times uh, Forty or eighty pi precisely radians per minute instead instead of revolutions per minute because each remember a complete revolution means two pi radians.
That's why you multiply by two pi. And again, we keep it as pi to be exact. And then if need be, we do the approximation. V equals our omega and R is given as a two. Omega is AD pi and we get 160 pi precisely, roughly 502.65 feet per minute. Uh, please pay attention to the conversion of the units and uh, the fact that we use uh, decimals versus exact answer. Always show the exact answer in your work, always. Find the exact value of each of the remaining trigonometric functions of theta given that tangent is minus square root of three over three. We need to figure out the quadrant. They give us this uh, tangent and they give us the sign. Tangent is negative. Remember, tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant, negative in the second and fourth quad quadrant. And sine is positive in the first and second. Okay. And that means quadrant two. Again, I want to make sure we understand what's happening and why. This is negative in the second and fourth quadrant. This is positive in the first and second quadrant. What is in common? Second quadrant. That's how you come up with that. And in fact, because it's a common arc, you should know theta is five pi over six, okay? Because uh, tan of pi over six is square root of three over three, that is the reference arc, so it makes it five pi over six. But in any event, um, let's go with the methodology again, reminding you of all of these formulas that you've seen, x squared plus y squared is one, in this case, r squared. So x squared plus y squared is one for the unit circle. But if you have a general case, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, these are the uh, formulas and the uh, they are very straightforward. What happens is that R is no longer one. That's why you divide by it if you're dealing with a circle other than a unit circle. So if you want to go with that, again, there are other ways of finding them. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Okay. And uh, what happens is that tangent is Y over X squared of three over minus three. X is minus three. Y equals three. Why is that? Because we decided and showed that we are dealing with quadrant two where X is negative, Y is positive. Okay, first again, I wanna make sure. So tan theta is Y over X, square root of three over negative three. By the way, it, it, it has a negative sign. You can put it at top, the bottom, or in front of a fraction bar. And the reason we do it in that fashion because we know Y is supposed to be positive and X supposed to be negative. Now put it into this and what do we get here? This is nine, this is three, and we get 12. So R is square root of 12, and 12 is four times three. So it's two square root of three. And now we can follow those and say sine is y over r, y over r. This square root of three cancels out this square root of three and uh, we get one half, okay? You should know sine of pi over six is one half and sine is positive. Sine of five pi over six is the same because remember, when you have this one, your reference arc is pi over six. We've discussed that. That means the values are the same, except you have to figure out positive or negative based on the quadrant. So you have the sign, you have the tangent, and you can find the rest of them. For example, cosine is x negative 3 over r 2 square root of 3. Okay. And I'm going to leave it for you to figure out the rest. Okay. <clears throat> you can uh, 
definition of in no time. What matters is understanding how you arrive at the quadrant. Therefore, how you arrive at X and Y. And using X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, how you get R. And you just plug it in. Find the exact value of each of the uh, remaining trigonometric function of theta, given that secant is two and sine is positive. Secant is one over cosine. That means if secant is positive, so is cosine. Cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. Therefore, we have quadrant four. I want to make sure we understand what happened here. So. This is a positive value. Secant and cosecant are positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. What's in common? Fourth quadrant. So if uh, secant is two, cosine must be half. <clears throat> Again, you can go with the formulas that we had in the previous page. You can go with uh, identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Cosine squared is one fourth, subtracted from one is three fourths. Sine is plus minus squared of three fourths. But we will decide which one and why positive or negative. And by the way, it's plus minus squared of three over two, right? Because the four comes out. Which quadrant are we talking about? Quadrant uh, four, and uh, of course, sine is negative. Even if we didn't figure it out, they say sine is negative. So you have to go with the negative. The rest is easy. Um, uh, tangent is sine over cosine, and the rest of them are the reciprocals, okay? So for example, since we have the sine, uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of this number, which makes the negative two over square root of three. Now, uh, rationalization, you multiply by square root of three over square root of three, and you get minus two square root of three over three. Most likely, this is the format you should answer. Now, tangent is a sine over cosine. So sine over cosine. You drop the bottom two and you get negative square root of three. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And of course, one over negative square root of three, you can rationalize it. You can, if need be, class just multiply by square root of three over square root of three, which gives you negative square root of three over three. Those are the answers, and we rewrite them. We rewrite them in order. Those are the same answers we got. So trigonometric identities would do the job. You have several methods, and uh, you can choose any of them. We want to simplify secant power four, cotangent power four, and <clears throat> secant uh, is one over cosine. And the reason we do it because we know cosine of power four is square root of two over two. Cotangent is one, and that means two over square root of two. That means square root of two. So we can easily come up with the answer. sine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta minus cosine theta minus sine theta over cosine theta. We take the LCD, the least common denominator is the product of these two. And therefore, we're going to multiply this one by cosine. We're going to multiply this one by sine. So sine theta plus cosine theta times cosine theta becomes sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared minus cosine and sine or sine cosine minus and minus plus is sine squared. I hope everybody can see that we did take the common denominator 
and then it becomes nice and easy. Reminding you of the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is one, one plus tan squared is secant squared, one plus cotangent squared is uh, cosecant squared. So what happens is this one cancels out this one, and this adds up to one, Uh, you can sort of leave it like that because uh, if you want to continue, you can. I'll show you what happens next. You can say 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. As you know, 1 over sine is cosecant, 1 over cosine is secant, so that's another way of writing. Either way is fine. Sine squared plus cotangent squared plus uh, cosine squared. We notice this is equal to one. So we put them next to each other so it becomes clear. This two, they give us one plus cotangent squared. One plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. We are done. So knowing uh, Pythagorean identities, knowing all the identities we've discussed is extremely important to continue. Cosine of power 6 times secant of 13 power 6. Okay. So first and foremost, this one, I can take out 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi and make it pi over 6. This is the same as 2 pi. And since the period is 2 pi, you can just get rid of it and say pi over 6. And secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine of pi over 6 divided by cosine of pi over 6 is equal to 1. You can write it in this fashion. Or from here, you can write it in... From here, you can write it as cosine of power six over cosine of power six, and the beautiful one. It's your choice. Cotangent of theta plus cotangent of theta minus pi plus cotangent of theta minus minus two pi. As you know, the uh, sinusoidal functions are periodic functions, and for all of them is two pi the period except tangent and uh, cotangent. So multiples of pi will do the job. So that means minus pi plus pi makes no difference. This is the same as cotangent. Minus 2 pi plus 2 pi makes no difference. This is the same as cotangent theta. And we have three of them. So three cotangent theta. Pretty straightforward. Find the amplitude, period, intercepts, and phase shift of the function. Sketch the graph of a complete period. Y equals negative 6 sine pi over 3x plus 4. Uh, if we have a complete period, a complete cycle, then we can go indefinitely on both sides. So I want to remind you how we do the graphing when it comes to sinusoidal functions. Remember, a complete cycle for a basic sine function is that. And there are four arcs. This is one between zero and power two. This is the second one between power two and pi. This is the third one between pi and three power two. And of course, 
let's call it one, two, three, four. So this is the fastest and easiest uh, way to graph this, everybody, okay? When we do that, of course, for a basic function domain is uh, uh, all real numbers, range is from negative one to one, period is two pi, amplitude A equals one. We can write it in two formats. First, if we write it in this format, the general form, y equals a sine bx minus c plus d, we can take the b out. Because when we take the B out, we get C over B. This is the phase shift, everybody. Or in some texts, they may they we use A sine omega times X minus phi over omega plus B. As long as you understand the concept, it doesn't matter what variables we use. So what happens in this case? The period is 2 pi over B or 2 pi over omega. Amplitude is the same thing. Phase shift, C over B or phi over omega. If C is less than zero, phase shift to the left. If it's larger than zero, P is short for phase shift. Let me just do that here, everybody. So this for short, okay, P S phase shift, okay. Note, the midline of a function is the horizontal line midway between the max and mean value of a function for y equals sine theta. The midline, in case you hear that somewhere, is the line y equals zero, which is the horizontal axis. And in general, the midline is y equals d. So the midline in this case is just the um, uh, x-axis. The x-axis has the equation y equal to zero, but in this case is d, okay? In this case, actually is b. So it depends on the format that you're going to use. So what was the question? Let's take it from the top first. I wanted to give you the concept, reminding you that if we have a sine b times x minus c over b plus b, d, or a sine omega x minus phi over b plus b, please understand, depending on the text, you may have this one, you may have this one. And if you have this one is two pi over omega, and if you have this one is two pi over b, that would be the period and the amplitude. So in short, in short, the amplitude doesn't change. The uh, absolute value of minus six is six. And to find the period, all you have to do, divide by the coefficient of x. Now you can call this omega. In physics, normally they use omega, or you can call it b. Either makes either way makes no difference. Two pi divided by the coefficient of x. The number sitting in front of x is the coefficient. Two pi divided by power, by power three, I hope you recognize this as six. It's a complex fraction. And um, this shifts it up and down. In, in, in fact, it moves it up by four. And there is no phase shift. There is no phase shift. So you are going to uh, cut the period into four equal parts. OK. The period happen to be equal to the amplitude. Normally, they are not. So this one, you cut it into four equal parts and you get three halves or 1.5, three halves or 1.5, either way is fine. And so you are going to cut the entire period of from zero to six, you got to cut, cut it into four sub intervals. The first one is zero to three halves. The second one is three halves. So just to give you an idea how we get that, so I'm going to, so the first one is zero to three halves. Let's just write it here, zero to three halves. The second one is what? Three halves to three halves plus three halves, right? Which makes it three. 
The next one is, this is three. From three to uh, add three halves to three, which makes it nine halves. And this is what we get when we do it. Okay, very straightforward. Those are the solving terms. Now the endpoints are zero. Three halves are 1.5, three. Okay, that repeats. Nine halves are 4.5 and six. So we are going to set up this table with the end point, 0, 1.5 or, or 3 halves, 3, 4.5 or 9 halves. Again, clearly class, this is, let's see, this one or 3 halves, this is 3 halves, this is 1.5 or 3 halves. 4.5 or 9 halves. We should know they are the same. So what do we do? We are going to put that, in, put that into this and evaluate it. What I want to do, I want to evaluate it two ways. First, I want to evaluate it without the 4, just to give you a point. So without this, just plug in. And it should be easy. If I plug in 0, I get 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Minus 6 times 0, I get 0. 1.5 or three halves, maybe easier. So I want to show you just three halves and you can figure out the rest. So if I plug in here three halves, I get minus six sine of power three times three halves, which means minus six sine of power two. Sine of power two is one, so we get minus six. So we got zero here, we got minus six here, okay? If I plug in three, I get pi, sine of pi is zero. I get zero here. By the way, the same thing at six. If I plug in six, I get two pi and I get zero. 4.5 or nine halves. I want to show you that 4.5 also, just in case. So it's minus six sine of pi over three times nine halves, which means nine pi over six, which means three pi over two. So you're looking at negative, sine, negative six sine of three pi over two. You should know sine of three pi over two is negative one times negative six, makes it positive six, okay? So for y equals negative sine pi thirds x, you get those answers. Let me erase my work. So you get those answers. But what about four? Four creates a vertical shift of four. So that means the y coordinates just add whatever this number. If it's positive, add positive four. If it's negative, add negative four. So I'm going to add four to those numbers. This becomes four. This becomes negative two. This becomes four. This becomes 10. And this becomes four. Add four to this second row. So for this function, you need zero, four. 1.5 or 3 halves, negative 2, 3, 4. So you have to ignore that now. Let me sort of show you that now this one you can ignore, okay? Because this pertains to this one. You could graph this and then shift it up by 4 or just go directly to those numbers. Uh, if we uh, grab more numbers, okay, for example, if you plug in negative 6 class, uh, becomes negative 2 pi, this becomes 0. With the 4, this becomes 4. And I'm going to assume you can figure out the rest. So let's plot pairs. And this is y equals 4. Let's plot those. We're going to plot 0, 4, not 0, 0. 0, 4. We're going to plot 3, 4, and 6, 4. 0, 4. 3, 4. Six, four, all of them. See, all of them 
uh, where the x intercepts and now shifts up to by four units. Okay. In other words, zero, zero, three, zero, six, zero. Those are the three x intercepts. So those x intercepts from here and here and here shifted up four. Let's do those two points. Those are the max and mean that have been shifted. And now put them all together. That's one complete cycle. You're done, class. But just for the sake of argument, if you go indefinitely on both sides, this is what you get. Uh, so just quickly, uh, the second method class going back here. The second method basically does uh, this one without the four and then ships it up. So it's going to be the same, the amplitude, the period. I'm not going to, you know, spend time on that. No phase shift, cut it into three. So it's identical to the previous page. And now you are looking at only this function and graph those. So if you graph them, you get those, okay? And then those two, you get those. And that's the graph. This is the graph of this function. However, plus four means shift up by four units. So now take this up by four units. Uh, this is called the midline. The midline y plus four. And so same numbers, put them here. Just add four, so it's zero becomes four. Remember the previous page? Minus six plus four is negative two. Zero becomes four. Six plus four becomes 10. Zero becomes four. And now that's the new one. I hope everybody can see the uh, second method is very straightforward. And if you uh, continue, you'll get to the answer. Those are the new pairs. All right, so that was... Uh, very straight forward. We're going to repeat the same question, but this time for the function y cos 2 cosine 3x plus power 2. Now, uh, the first thing you want to do, you want to take the 3 out so it becomes clear what is the phase shift. So if I factor the three out, this becomes X, this becomes pi over two divided by three, everybody. So divide everything by three, this becomes X, this becomes pi over two divided by three, which is pi over six. That doesn't change the amplitude is two. T is two pi over B or omega, so the coefficient of x is 3, or here, 2 pi divided by 3. Um, the phase shift plus pi over 2, uh, plus pi over 6, that this is the one we have to pay attention to. It moves it to the left by pi over 6. That's why we put minus pi over 6. And we're going to cut the period into four equal parts. When you divide this by four, you get two pi over 12. Because you're going to multiply this one by four. And two pi over 12 is pi over six. So. The period is two pi over three. So normally we go from 0 to 2 power 3. 0 to 2 power 3. However, we have to shift it to the left. So I want to make sure we understand what happens here. This means normally we should have 0 to 2 power 3 if there is no phase shift. Because of the phase shift, we add the phase shift meaning if it's negative, negative. So we add negative power six. So when you do that, 
this becomes negative power six, this becomes power two. So one complete cycle goes from negative power six to positive power two. We are going to cut this into four equal parts. That means each part we add power six. The very first one is minus power six. If you add power six becomes zero. So minus power six, the, the next one is zero. The next one is pi over six. Then add power six becomes power three, add power six becomes power two. Please understand. We start from negative power six and we add this. When we add this, we get zero. When we add it again to zero, we get power six. When we add power six to power six, we get power three and finally power two. So those are the four sub intervals, everybody. And so let's uh, pick minus power six, zero power six, power three and power two as the X coordinate and let's plug in. So we're gonna plug in here. So minus pi over six times three, negative three pi over six. So let's just try this one, for example. If I plug this in, uh, I get two times cosine, okay, three times negative pi over six is negative three pi over six plus pi over two. I hope you recognize this as zero. Cosine of zero, one. So this is two, we get two. What about zero? If I put zero here, I get two cosine of power two. Cosine of power two is zero, zero times two remains. Let's plug in pi over six. So if I plug in pi over six, and I'm gonna write it here, I get two cosine of three times pi over six plus pi over two. And I hope you recognize this as pi over two plus pi over two, which is pi. So it's equal to two cosine pi. Now cosine pi is negative one, times two makes it negative two. So I showed three of them how you calculate. You can uh, figure out the rest. Pi over three is very simple. If you plug in pi over three here, times three becomes pi. Pi and pi over two is three pi over two cosine is zero. So that's zero, okay? If you plug in pi over two and pi over two, uh, you get, um, if you plug in pi over two, you multiply it by three, you get three pi over two. With pi over two, you get two pi. Cosine of two pi is one times two is two. So those are easy calculation. I hope you're okay with those. Let me erase my work. And so basically you plot those pairs. Minus pi over six, zero, zero, zero. Pi over six, negative two, zero, pi over three, zero, pi over two, two. And that's a complete cycle. Maybe a couple more points, you can calculate them. If you continue indefinitely, that goes that way. But just wanted you to see the major cycle, the main cycle, one complete cycle. Very straightforward, I believe. Find the domain and range intercepts and vertical asymptotes of the function sketch the graph of one complete cycle when y is tan half of x. What I want you to know, tangent is sine over cosine. And the period we said is pi. So the domain is whatever makes the denominator zero excluded and whatever makes it zero becomes the vertical asymptote. So what makes cosine x zero, two n plus one times power two? So that's your vertical asymptote. On the other hand, for the domain, all of those have to be excluded. Now, 
What are the x-intercepts? Sine x is zero. The numerator is zero. That gives you the x-intercepts. N pi comma zero. So this really should be easy to see from the fact that tangent is sine over cosine. And so uh, in order for you to find the period, remember you have to divide by the coefficient of x division by one half means multiplication by two. So basically what happens, we go from minus power two to power two for one cycle, but now we're gonna go with half of this pi to two pi. That's all there is to it. So, and what happens here? Just change the pi, everybody, in each case, take a look. This one is pi, change it to whatever, whatever that you come up with here, change it. So it becomes two n pi. Uh, as far as the vertical asymptote, replace the pi with two pi. Two pi cancels out the two, gives you pi, okay? So take a look. X cannot be, okay, two n plus one, uh, replace the pi with two pi, cancels out the two, it becomes pi. That means vertical asymptotes are those. The range uh, remains the same, all real numbers, by the way. Ranges are real numbers uh, in the case of a tangent. Vertical asymptote, the same thing here, put it equality. And for a complete cycle, half of that, x equals minus pi and x equals pi. And you pick up a few values in between zero, gives you zero, uh, minus, Pi over two, if you plug in here, minus pi over two gives you minus pi over four, and that's negative one. Pi over two gives you pi over four, tan of pi over four is positive one. And plot those three easy pairs and put them together like so. It's very straightforward, everybody. Find the amplitude period intercepts and phase shift of the function and sketch the graph. Y equals three cosine pi x minus four. And of course the amplitude is three. And these are the information we have seen before. The amplitude is three. Uh, T is two pi. And you divide it by the coefficient of x. Remember that, that gives you two. And there is no phase shift everybody. So, we are going to cut this into four equal parts. Two divided by four is one half. So there is no phase shift. We start from zero. So zero to one half, one half to one, one to three halves, three halves to two. Clearly that's a very easy case. And so you are going to evaluate the function at zero. If I plug in zero, cosine zero is one. Three times that three minus four makes it negative one. So again, easy ones classify plug in zero i get three times one minus four okay if i plug in one half i get three times cosine of a pi over two minus four you know cosine of power two is zero so you get minus four okay if i plug in one If I plug in one, I get three cosine pi minus four. You should know cosine pi is negative one. You get minus seven. So it's very easy to figure this out, plug in. And again, vertical shift is four, okay? Vertical shift is four, and it results in these numbers. And I calculated three of them for you. Negative one, negative four, negative seven, you should easily see those. All you have to do, plot the pairs. This is y equals negative 4, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 7, 2, minus 1, 1 half, negative 4, 3 halves, and, and negative 4. These are the two points that are normally the x intercepts for a cosine but has been shifted down by four units okay and a complete cycle looks like that very straightforward 
very simple everything. Let's look at this example. Find the domain and range and vertical asymptotes of the function, sketch the graph, cosecant in general. Graphs, sine, because cosecant is one over sine. So when you're dealing with cosecant, notice is one over sine. Therefore, what is the domain? You set the denominator equal to zero, you exclude it. So X can't be n pi. And at the same time, vertical asymptote becomes n pi. It has the same period. And the range is everything uh, that sine has excluded. Sine goes from negative one to one. So all real numbers except that. And uh, there is no X intercept. So basically we're gonna go with uh, Y equals sine pi X. We're gonna completely ignore that, graph that, and then flip that graph over. So the amplitude is one, right? There is no number here. That means the sum there is number one. A period, you're gonna divide two pi by the coefficient of x, which is pi, and you get two. The period is two, and there is no phase shift. And we're gonna cut this number into four equal parts. It happened to be the same as the previous one, one half. And therefore, this we have already done that from zero to one half, one half to one, one to three half, three half to two. So we want to evaluate this. So plug in zero, sine of zero is zero. Uh, plug in one half, sine of pi over two is one. Plug in one, sine of pi is zero. Three halves, sine of Three pi over two is negative one and two uh, sine of two pi is zero. So it's easy to see those numbers. So we are going to uh, graph the intercepts first at zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. Okay. Zero, one, two. We are going to uh, graph the max and mean at one half of one, negative, uh, three halves, negative one. This is the graph of sine. Okay. Flip over the graph. It flips over. Okay, of course, can continue indefinitely if you want. And so domain X can't be N. Range is the same, uh, you know, anything from negative one to one is excluded. Vertical asymptote, the same thing, but equal. And for one complete cycle, X equals zero, X equals one, X equals two, those are the three for a complete period or cycle. So we can say this means period or cycle. 